My name's John Peavers. I'm the Director of Community and Media Relations for Bruce Power. Over my shoulder, you can see the Bruce B generating station, currently producing about 15% of Ontario's electricity. Got pressure tubes, calandria tubes that we're replacing. Up here, you have the steam generators, which are basically the size of a school bus. Replacing those, you essentially have a brand new reactor. It's like replacing the engine of your car. Thanks so much for a tour today of Bruce. It was really remarkable. I've never been to a can-do reactor before. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on communicating the value of nuclear power to Canadians. Simplifying a really difficult technology is one of the challenges we face, but we do find the more knowledgeable people get about nuclear, the more supportive they get. So, you know, we're continually trying to provide information in the way that works for people. The visitor center that we're standing in, I think, is a great example of a facility where we get, you know, 5,000, 10,000 people through in an average year, and we can, you know, show them how nuclear works, answer their questions. I didn't realize you get that much traffic. That's good. We're in a tourist area. It's a great rainy day activity for people if they can't make it to the beach they'll come see how nuclear power works and yeah there's a lot of interest and people are open-minded and, and really do want to learn do you have any broad generalizations you think you can make about people who are opposed to nuclear power i think there are some people that are just you know either philosophically opposed to nuclear or you know that's their job frankly you know there's some of these uh uh, you know, professional anti-nuclear organizations, that is their job, and we'll talk to anybody, but we also recognize there are some people whose minds we won't change, but yeah, we're always happy to have conversations about nuclear power, and the more people learn, the more they tend to be supportive, and we've seen a real change recently, you know, with the challenges of climate change and the understanding, the growing recognition that, that you know, we're going to have a hard, really hard time getting to our net zero targets without nuclear, so we've seen support really increase. When we do polling locally in our own region where there's a lot of familiarity with Bruce Power and nuclear because we've been here for a long time we see upwards of 80 to 90 percent of people who support what we do who think we're doing a good job. I'm surprised how uh, supportive Alberta is when we're pulled on nuclear power and how unsupportive British Columbia is. So these are two provinces that neither one of us have any nuclear power. Do you have any idea what's going on? I think in that same polling, yeah, you see a greater support where there is existing nuclear uh, in places like New Brunswick and, and Ontario. I think Alberta is open to it because I think there's just a desire there to decarbonize and I think BC has the advantage of a lot of hydroelectric power so they don't, maybe don't need it. I think Alberta recognizes if they're going to clean up the grid that nuclear is a great way to do it. Do you see any scenario unfolding where we can get a CANDU 6E in Alberta? I understand that wasn't exactly the reactor that was being planned in 2006, but right now I'm hearing that it might be the best CANDU reactor for Alberta. I certainly think that CANDU is a great Canadian-made technology, uses natural uranium, has a lot of built-in layers of safety. It's something that Canadians should be really proud of. Um, so yeah, if, if Alberta chooses to embrace it, uh, it would not surprise me. Would you have a take on what happened when the 2006 Alberta plan fell through? I think it was cancelled by 2008. Uh, we were, you know, certainly investigating the potential and, and saw some interest in Alberta. Um, it really was financially driven, it, you know, global financial crisis in 2008 sort of cancelled a, a lot of plans we had. Um, you know, we, we were looking at expanding potentially in Alberta. We had made, had some conversations in Saskatchewan and seen some interest there as well, as well as at the Nanico, the former Nanakoke coal plant in uh, in Ontario here but yeah when the economy uh, started to suffer then we sort of uh, decided to refocus our attention here on site on refurbishing the units which we're in the midst of right now is in making sure that we can deliver electricity in Ontario from now till 2064. Can we make more heavy water in Canada? We don't need it right now we, uh, we did produce heavy water on the Bruce site for many years. There is enough heavy water currently for the existing reactors. If we were to expand, we would require more heavy water, but we know how to make it. We've made it before, we could make it again. Can we export CANDU worldwide? We have before. It's an amazing technology that certainly could have application worldwide. If you were speaking to a schwack of anti-nuclear activists, what would you say to them? You know, if we could power the world on renewables you know i think everybody would get on board with that but they are intermittent by nature generally need to be backed up by something a lot of times that's gas which adds to emissions so i think with the challenge before us we need to sort of put our biases uh, aside and recognize that we need something base load something dependable something that can produce large amounts of electricity to me that's nuclear
I thought as we were walking around that there was an impressive amount of security. I, I kind of thought maybe it was over secure. I, no, I don't expect you to agree with me on that. Why are, is there such heavy security around the plant? Security really changed after 9-11. We did not have armed security prior to 9-11. Um, our regulator, the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission, mandated that uh, we, we must have uh, an armed security team. And, you know, it's typical Bruce Power fashion. If, we, if we're going to do it, we want to be the best. Um, so, yeah, we've uh, brought in uh, a, a really uh, professional, uh, top-notch security team. They take their jobs seriously. They keep us safe, and I think the community should feel safe knowing that, you know, in the very unlikely event that we ever had, uh, you know, some sort of incident involving the security team, that they're more than prepared to, to handle it. Do you live in this area? Yes, I do. Yeah, I live in Port Elgin. I've lived there uh, for most of my life. It's 30 minutes from the plant. So you've been able to witness how this. Uh, economically, uh, Bruce plant uh, affects the community. Absolutely. You look at, um, you know, since we started the major component replacement, we've encouraged our suppliers to come in, set up shop in this region, which we're calling, you know, the clean energy frontier. We've had 60 of those suppliers set up shop in the region. So they're buying homes, buying groceries, paying taxes, having a huge positive economic impact on the region. Vice to other provinces. The economic impact uh, can be significant. Our communities are prospering. Uh, we're, you know, making sure that the communities share the benefit of the project. That's one of the things I do in my role: maximize the economic benefit to to their municipality and and make these places uh, better places to live. Okay. Well, thank you so much for no your time and the tour. It was no fantastic. That was great.